the dawn of a new year is a cleansing. And it is time once again to hose off the bird crap that is last year's bad pop music from the windshield of life. Let us consign this year's bad music into the dustbin of history. Let us incinerate it like so many photos of our ex-girlfriends. Let us toss it into the garbage like so much Thanksgiving leftover ham we forgot in the back of the fridge. We are deleting all of it off of the collective hard drive so that we may have space on it for next year's terrible, terrible pop music. Also, as always, I choose to restrict this list to the hits because they're the ones that actually matter, which is why I use the Billboard Year End 100 to narrow down my choices. But this year I'm also expanding it to any single that plays in the top 20 in 2012. So that way I avoid stupid crap like when I had to put CeeLo on the 2011 list even though his song came out in 2010. Got all that? Good, because we're not waiting any longer. We're counting down! The Top 10 Worst Hit Songs of 2012. Number 10. They're the quintessential American band. Excuse me, what? They're the quintessential American band. Holy crap, VH1. I don't think I've ever even heard Al-Qaeda say anything that anti-American. I guess if you're trying to say that the United States is singing into a quagmire of recession and misery, then yeah, Train would be the quintessential American band in that sense. And since the abomination drive-by proved that Train had staying power into the 2010s, I guess I couldn't be surprised that their next single sounded exactly like it. But most times when bands rip themselves off, it's usually not on the same album. It's the same song. It's the same damn song. Well, that's not quite true. 50 Ways to Say Goodbye is distinguished from Dry By by a couple things. First off, they added some mariachi horns, which is at least a musical idea and not a bad one at that. Fortunately, they made up for it with possibly their single stupidest set of lyrics yet. This song is obviously inspired by Paul Simon's 1975 mega hit 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, which was silly in its own way, but it's worth noting that Simon used that kitty rhyming game as an ironic and callous counterpoint to a very dark song. Don't need to be caught Just get yourself free. Train, meanwhile, uses a silly conceit to come up with stupid ways to say his girlfriend is dead so he doesn't have to admit that he got dumped, which is neither funny nor compelling nor, in Train's hands, even particularly mean or sad. They're not even Jewish. I legitimately don't know what attracts Pat Monahan to music, and I doubt if even he knows why he wrote this. If you can't find a good rhyme for a word, just use a different word for Christ's sake. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty stupid lie, considering that people don't really put quicksand in cement mixers. Not, not that it was a funny joke to begin with. Look, Pat Monahan is a madman. His brain just doesn't work the same way as most people. He's an effective product. And there may be 50 ways to say goodbye, but they perform it in only one way. Sucking. Number 9. I try not to let overplay affect my year-end rankings, but oh god was I sick of this. I don't quite mean I'm sick of this song. I'm sick of everything it represents. I'm sick of the not at all titillating references to sex. I'm sick of the tired club stutter beats. But most of all, I'm sick of Rihanna. Here's a statistic for you. In the eight years of her career, Rihanna has released seven and a half albums. That's insane. Even the greatest artists of all time would have trouble making decent albums with a release schedule that tight. And it's quickly becoming clear that Rihanna is not an all-time great artist. Rihanna needs to take a break, but her manager is so fearful of Rihanna being forgotten that she's actually not allowed to. If Rihanna said she was checking into rehab for exhaustion, I would actually believe she was telling the truth. 
As for Where Have You Been, I don't think I would say this is the worst song she's ever released, but it's certainly the most tired, the most uninspired, the one that least rewards repeated listens. Basically, the only interesting thing about it is that it starts with a quote from an old country song. But all that does is remind you that you should probably leave the club and go home and listen to some Johnny Cash. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Seriously, why, why wouldn't I just listen to that? No one could have seriously thought that a well-crafted chorus about love and gratitude and hot sex should just go, Where have you been all my life? Over and over and over again. Well, I know where you've been, Rihanna, because you won't go away. How can I miss you if you won't leave? Looking for you, babe. Searching for you, babe. I think I finally had enough. I think I maybe think too much. I think this might be it for us. Number eight. Number eight? Are you sure that this isn't number two? Yes, let us have a short remembrance of Pitbull's already forgotten theme song for the already forgotten Men in Black 3, wiped from collective consciousness by the neuralizer of mediocrity. This song certainly was a big seeming pile of number two. What with its mismatched sample, off topic lyrics, tired self aggrandizing, and baffling out of place dubstep breakdown. But despite all that, I think I'm done ever being angry at Pitbull. He's, he's just kind of adorable to me now. I, I honestly almost kind of admire how bad this song is. I, I realize I'm condescending to a multi-millionaire here, but I'm just like, oh, this is precious. It's just like, wow, how did this even happen? Seriously, how? I can only conclude, aliens. Yes, my theory is that this song about aliens secretly living among us is in fact by an alien secretly living among us. Extraterrestrials abducted Pitbull and replaced him with a replicant or possibly like a Meet Dave style robot piloted by Tiny Green Man. And this was the result of them trying to understand our human musical art forms. And since I've already talked about the song, let me talk about the movie for a second. God, what a letdown that was. Kay keeps talking about how he should have killed Boris the bad guy 40 years ago, but when you find out why, it's just nothing. Nothing at all. Also, it's kind of depressing that Agent J is still acting like the Fresh Prince in his mid-40s. Just like it's depressing that Pitbull is still making the same party 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 baller jams he's been making for years now. To understand the future, we have to go back in time. And going back in time just six months, I think I understand why our future will probably have no more Pitbull in it. Dolly! Number seven. Inexcusable. In a year where the UK inflicted both Jesse J and One Direction on the world, Brit Brat Cher Lloyd brought us the very worst of the transatlantic crossover hits, Want You Back, a genuinely charmless song from an absolutely reprehensible artist. If anyone ever tells you that the British are more sophisticated than us, don't buy it. And now you're taking her to every restaurant. Yeah. Taking her to every restaurant? Every single restaurant, huh? Gosh, how dare your ex take his new girlfriend on gasp dates? Shut up. Cher Lloyd is there to remind you of everything wrong, evil, and sociopathic about teenage girls. If Taylor Swift speaks to adolescence at its most innocent, Cher Lloyd is there to represent it at its stupidest, bitchiest, and ugliest. And if I may be bitchy in return, Oh, honey, I don't think someone who dresses like a 50-year-old mob wife from Long Island should be criticizing other people's fashion. Cha. Perhaps it would be more appropriate to replace every constipated grunt from Cher with the sound of me groaning in pain whenever I hear this song. American public, I beg you, please, please, please send this back to its own continent. It's the sound of trying too hard. Number six. One big trend of 2012 is that T 
teen idols are back in a big way. I mean, they'll always be around, but for a while now they've been confined to their little teen pop ghetto, at least until 2012 when they came back into the mainstream. Justin Bieber can actually claim to have hits this year and we've started importing the British boy bands, but while Bieber's newfound maturity has not translated anything but mediocrity and One Direction are just an awful, awful, terrible group, they're not the ones I've singled out for this list. No. I want to introduce you to a charming young man named Hunter Hayes. You know I'd fall apart without you. Yes, there's a country Justin Bieber. Did that sentence just make you involuntarily shudder? Because I know I sure did. This is actually the highest ranking country song on the list, unless you count Taylor Swift, which of course I don't. Hunter Hayes is the final step in the boy bandification of country music, yet somehow worse than that implies. His publicists have been hyping him up as a super talented multi-instrumentalist, which I respect, but talent isn't the same thing as quality. The fact is that his first big single, Wanted, is absolute garbage, possessing one of the lamest set of baby baby love you girl lyrics I've ever heard, including from Bieber, whose biggest hit just went baby 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 oh. Need you in my life, babe. Wanna hold you in my arms, girl, etc., etc., etc. Wanna hold your hand? It, it's, it's not 1963 anymore, guy. There is no man in the world this innocent, girls. I want to make you feel wanted is how drunk guys hit on you. This song is so unbelievably chaste that I can only see it as a complete con. Hunter Hayes just wants to get laid, girls. Don't fall for it. I just wanna wrap you up. They're all falling for it, aren't they? Why do I even waste my time? Number five. I was gonna give this one a full review, but it's likely going to be gone by the time I finish these top 10 lists, so I might as well just tackle it now. Yes, folks, the long awaited team up of Will I Am and Britney Spears. Both artists we could have safely left in the previous decade. You are now, now rocking with Will I Am and Britney, bitch. She called me a bitch. Rock and roll. Now Will I Am was always the brains of the Black Eyed Peas, and I have to admit a kind of grudging respect for him as some kind of idiot savant, an artist with a distinct style and a claim to auteur status despite being a complete moron, the Michael Bay of music, if you will. Now he's always struggled for success without the Peas behind him, but. Here he swaps out Fergie for Britney Spears, which is basically just trading too much personality for not enough. Britney Spears stopped giving a shit about her chosen profession many years ago, and boy does she sound like it. When you hear this in the club, you gotta turn the shit up. Actually, no, wait, is that even Britney Spears at all? Is she being dubbed by Lady Gaga? Scream and Shout is like a grand tour of Will I Am's worst traits. His patented jumble of disconnected, vaguely partyish lyrics in the grand boom boom pow tradition, a painful, ugly beat lifted straight from Dirty Bit, and a pervading sense of utterly vacant nonsense. This is the degradation of pop. When they say they want to scream and shout, I don't picture a wild party or a primal scream of release. I see a two year old throwing a tantrum. I mean, th this song does make me want to scream and shout, Will I Am, but probably not for the right reasons. Number four. Fittingly enough, a song called Whistle totally blows. I already did a review of this, but I don't think I firmly conveyed what I think about the man they call Flo Rida. 
I want to make a definitive statement about what is surely the definitive artist of our time. So let me remedy that right here, right now. This is, in full, what needs to be said about Flo Rida. There, I think that sums it up. This man is not worth expending thoughts on the end. Number three. Okay, Maroon 5, you're officially on the shit list. As we continue into Maroon 5, the sellout years, I can honestly say I didn't hate moves like Jagger, and I could even forgive Payphone, whose biggest crime was mostly just being boring. But then the inexplicably popular One More Night happened, and all I can say is Maroon 5 needs to officially go away. Okay, see, the, the British have a useful term, cod reggae. Basically, it just describes lame, stiff, usually white people co-opting Caribbean rhythms for their music. I assume it's called cod reggae because it stinks like dead fish, and One More Night would be a prime example of such. It's also a good illustration of why Adam Levine is so easy to hate as a performer. All his woe is me, bad relationship songs always sounded like a backdoor way to brag about all the hot sex he's having, and One More Night brings that subtext right into the text. Oh, we're so bad for each other, but we just lay in bed and bone each other all day. Oh, it's so awful. Woe is me. Eat me, Levine. This is the douchebaggiest song of the year, and every time I hear it, I want to swing a golf club into Levine's nuts. Which, by the way, is exactly what it sounds like when he's singing. I've never liked Levine's voice, but he has never been as unlistenable as he is here, honking out these bizarre discordant yelps like a strangled parrot. This is Levine at his very, very most punchable. And the rest of Maroon 5 should be ashamed for every note they played on this. By which I mean they shouldn't be ashamed at all, because I seriously doubt they played a single note on this soulless piece of dreck. What exactly is the point of this song? Is it supposed to be angry? Sad? Romantic? Hot? What? All it is is obnoxious. This kept Gangnam Style off the number one spot. I hope you're happy, America. I don't know, whatever. Number two. Hefty bag. Pat Monahan hates music, romance, the English language, and you. Most of all, what I detect from Train's music is smug detachment. As in, I can put out any kind of malformed crap I want in these lyrics. You'll buy it, screw you. And why Train? There are so many bands from the 90s, and how many are they making hits still? Is it, you know, is it Smashing Pumpkins? Is it Pearl Jam? Is it, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know, Spice Girls, Ace of Bass? No, it's Train. I, I can't pretend that the hefty bag thing doesn't still piss me off. Pat Monahan's brain needs to be dissected in a lab so that we can understand what exactly causes his brand of schizophrenic aphasia and whether or not it's contagious. But d despite all that, after repeated listens, I think I found a lyric actually worse than the hefty bag line. They don't like it, so me. The way you do me. Mm, the way you do me? Like, excuse me, let me go find a two-ply hefty bag to vomit in. Drive-by is worse than just being badly written. It's gross. It's a garbage song about garbage. And if there were any justice in this world, Pat Monahan would be a victim of a drive-by instead of using one in one of his inane, tortured lyrics. This is not a uh, 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 uh. And now, before we get to number one, a couple of honorable mentions in sucking this year. You only live once, that's the motto, nigga, YOLO, and we bought it every day, every day, every day. Right, this would be the song that brought us that idiotic catchphrase, YOLO, which of course stands for You Only Live Once, which people use as an excuse to do all sorts of stupid shit this year. If this list measured worst effect on culture as a whole, the motto would be number one. If You Only Live Once is your motto, try to sound more enthused about it. YOLO, 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 NEXT. I won't give up, oh, us. 
dreadfully boring white guy acoustic guitar song, but ultimately sincere enough that I granted it mercy and left it off the list. Next. I have to say, I've never really been a fan of dubstep, but I was immediately struck by Alex Clare's intensity and passion when I first heard this song, and it was largely this that helped me understand the potential of dubstep in a pop context. And once I understood that, I, I suddenly realized that this song is garbage. Too Close to Love You is one of those douchebag, it's not you, it's me breakup lines. It's patently insincere and did it really need the wom 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 and the primal scream of agony? I think we should see other people! I'm not really feeling a relationship right now! Oh right, star shits. Biggest waste of talent in pop music. Next. You're insecure. Don't know what for. Let me make this clear. There's a reason One Direction thinks that you're beautiful because you don't know that you're beautiful. It's because you're hot enough to make a good trophy, yet too insecure to make them feel threatened by it. I, is that clear? You're beautiful because you're too stupid or damaged to ever leave him. That's what they're saying here. Got it? I would have put this on the list if it had been an actual hit. You've got that one thing, teenage female fan. You've got that one unnamed thing that makes me love you, wherever you are, whoever you are. You know, that one generic thing, generic love interest. Swoon, damn it! The Katy Perry wannabes arrived in full force this year. If there was a more generic, soulless song on the radio, I didn't hear it. Oh right, there was, there was this too, right? Yeah, the other big Katy Perry wannabe hit of the year. Uh, Jesse J is a better singer than Katy Perry, and I actually kind of liked this one at first, before I noticed that none of the lyrics made any sense at all. Do you, do you drink it? Is that a good thing? What? Knock you over into other dominoes? What? Next. Let's go crazy, crazy, crazy till we I just want to reiterate that One Direction are fucking awful. Just seriously, just an awful, awful group. Okay, enough jerking around. Back to the important stuff. Number one. I consider it a duty to bring you my opinions as honestly as possible, so I search really deep inside myself to find what pisses me off the most. You know, what is the most detestable, what is the least justifiable, what is the stuff that hits me in the gut as just unworthy of being displayed even once for consumer ears. And if we're talking about that kind of sheer visceral disgust, it comes back, as it always does, to Chris Brown. It's only me, right? I thought both I and the world had expended all our Chris Brown outrage after his Grammy controversy nine months ago, but since then he has generously continued to give the world all new reasons to hate him, and with hilarious regularity at that. But probably nothing was as controversial as his interactions with Rihanna, the woman he put in the hospital in 2009. Rumors of them rekindling their romantic relationship pervaded the tabloids all year, but more concretely, they publicly resumed their professional relationship by showing up on remixes of each other's songs, which just on its own set a very, very questionable message. But despite the endless gossip and moral quandaries that it brought up, I want to make clear that my number one pick for this list has nothing to do with my dislike of Chris Brown as a person, and it has nothing to do with whether or not I disapprove of Rihanna for continuing to associate with him. No, this is my number one pick because it is just an obscenely terrible piece of music. Come and put your name on it. This is supposedly a remix, but it's not really. 
since the original Birthday Cake is a minute long interlude that was just put on the album essentially unfinished. There was never a music video for it because Rihanna and Chris Brown's stupid, careless handlers at least know enough not to put the two of them on screen together. But that didn't mean I was lucky enough to avoid it either. If you needed a reason besides the obvious that Chris and Rihanna should never get back together, here it is. Nothing else like this, I'ma make you my bitch. Birthday. birthday Cake is yet another example of Rihanna musically exploring her BDSM kink, which she's done over and over again to diminishing returns. None less so than here with a beat that conveys all the sexiness of a throbbing migraine. Cake, 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 cake. If you thought a song about S&M that just went S S S and M M M over and over again was repetitive and uncreative, well, try on this for size, which just repeats a single word until your skull cracks. I think I know what the icing is, but what, what exactly is the candle? Girl, I, wanna fuck you right now. I reiterate, my distaste for this song has nothing to do with the fact that one of the singers beat up the other. But even so, the fact of Chris Brown's violent assault makes this hard to listen to in its own right. Remember how you did it? Remember how you did it? If oh, I remember how he did it. In, in fact, I kind of wish I could forget. Most people would try and get people to forget the most heinous thing they ever did, but Chris just can't stop bringing it up. Been a long time. I've been missing your body. Yeah, it has been a long time. Because she dumped you. Because you hit her. But I wanna lick the ice and out, ice and out. Give it to her in the worst way. Why do people keep letting Chris Brown do this to himself? Why, why, why doesn't he have people who can tell him don't sing about giving it to her in the worst way? Cause, cause you did already, Chris. You already did. You gave it to her in the worst way possible. Are, are his managers secretly slipping that kind of thing in his lyrics as a prank? Do, do they hate him as much as I do? The cake is a lie. And Chris Brown is a convicted felon. Chris Brown, still reprehensible in 2013. I'm done.